This section of the discussion on heteroskedasticity deals with how to detect the presence of this unequal error variance. And I'm going to use this uh, quick example to explain that. So this is a simple linear regression where we're regressing worker salary on years of experience. And um, here's a data set on spreadsheet actually. All right, you see right here, this is the original data set. So going right back here, by now you should already know how to run a regression on spreadsheets. And so here's a partial regression output containing all of the major things we are interested in knowing. First off, the regression is statistically significant, as you can see here, all right, now based on the F statistic. And also we can see that 80% that of the variation in worker salaries explained by years of experience. So we're happy with this, or are we? You know, we're going to have to do some diagnostics before we run away with this uh, estimated regression equation right there. So the first thing, one way to um, detect the presence of heteroscedasticity is to do a residual plot. So when you run a regression, remember, you can check the, residu the residual plot option and um, Excel is going to give you the plot as you see right here. You know, plotting the residuals against the values of X, you can do that. You can also plot it against Y hat values. Y hat is the predicted values of Y, which um, actually, if I go right here and you go to data, you go to data analysis and you go to regression you'll see this option here so among other things make sure you check this now when you check that in your output you're gonna get the um, residuals which um, if I can uh, make this look cleaner you will see um, what I've got there all right, so make it better. <laughs> All right, so you'll see your y hats, which is called the predicted value, and residuals. All right, and this is not on the original model, by the way. So here are the residuals. I copied it over next to the original model. And then you can plot it against y hats, uh, or you can plot it against x, as I did here. It's going to be the same pattern. So I note here that a plot of residuals may indicate the, pros the possible presence of heteroscedasticity by its tendency to fan out, as you kind of see here, as the values of x increase. The reverse could also be the case. It can actually contract too, depending on what the outcome is. So this means that, in this case, as the values of x become larger as you move from left to right, there is increasing dispersion. There is increasing dispersion, meaning increasing uncertainty associated with uh, the values of y, as you can see. The values of y could be way down here, or they could be way up there, as opposed to right back over, over here. So these are the things that I summarize here. And I conclude here that the spread of the residual seems to increase with the values of X, meaning that salary variation is generally greater for workers with more years of experience, as you can see right here. Someone out here makes a little money, someone out here makes a lot of money, given the same very high uh, years of experience. So the other way is to um, do a more rigorous test using, in this case, Goldfeld Quant test. Now this requires that in step one you're going to have to sort your regression data according to the magnitude of x values if you're running a simple linear regression model or if it's multiple regression um, you, you sort them according to the values of the, uh, according to the predicted values of y which is y hat and actually you can use y hat to, uh, to sort regardless whether simple or multiple and then after you've sorted the data set you're gonna have to split them into two approximately equal parts leaving out about 20 percent of the middle observations and then in step number three you run a regression on each of the parts noting the mean square error which as you know is our estimated error variance for each of the samples 
mean square error is the variance of the residuals whenever you run a regression. And then we're going to test the equality of the two error variances by dividing the larger mean square error by the smaller mean square error. Of course, if there is no heteroscedasticity, meaning if we have homoscedasticity in that the variation of y is the same um, for the two subsamples, then uh, the, this f statistic is going to be close to 1. And this statistic is f distributed uh, with uh, n1 minus k degrees of freedom in the numerator and n2, which is uh, sample size for subsample 2, minus k degrees of freedom in the denominator, where k is the number of parameters. So in a two-variable model, like in this case, we have two parameters to estimate, b0 and b1. So k is going to be 2. So let's, let me show you real quick how this would appear on spreadsheet. So as you can, this is my original data set, and as you see here, I copied over y hat values, and then I sorted from the smallest y hat value to the um, largest y hat value down over there. And to sort, of course, you're going to go to data and use sort, and then it's going to prompt you sort by what you choose y hat, and then smallest to largest, and then click OK, and it's going to give you this. And then I divided my my output into um, subsamples, as you can see. The yellow subsample, which is about 22 observations, and then uh, the light blue subsample, which has about the same number of observations after leaving out approximately um, one-fifth of the middle observation. So when I run the regression, when I regress y on x, I go down here, this is my output, and I, I make a note of the mean square error, mean square residual, the same thing. And then I do the same for the sky blue data set, regressing this here, this is my y on this, and this is my output right here, right? And I make note of the mean square error, and then I calculate the f statistic which is going to be the larger mean square error divided by the smaller mean square error. And that's going to give me 2.52. You can see the division right there. And here's the summary. So for my subsample 1, the yellow subsample, this is the mean square error. For the sky blue subsample, this is the mean square error. And these are the sample sizes and dividing the larger mean square error by the smaller one, my f is 2.52. And then I go to the f table to find the critical value. 17 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 16 degrees of freedom in the denominator. It's going to be approximately 2.3. So as you can see, our calculated f statistic exceeds the critical value of f, which would cause, which would cause us to reject the null hypothesis of no heteroscedasticity in favor of the alternative hypothesis of heteroscedasticity being present in the data set. And these are summarized right here in my conclusions. And as you can see, this Goldfell contest reinforces the findings we made when we looked at the residual plots.